right, so here are the buildings that Mila and I built with this foam core technique. Check these out. Don't these look good? Mila and I spent, uh, you know, a, a little bit of time working on all of these. So we'd have, and, and we went with Adobe buildings because we really felt like they would, they would cross over to a lot of different settings. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of concentrate on just doing one of these as an example, just so you can see how we're going to make this. Uh, and let's build this together. It's a really simple design, but once you kind of practice on a small one, you know, that's when you can then, you know, go back and go, hey, you know what, well, maybe I want to do one that has stairs on it, or maybe I want to do one that has two sets of stairs, and, you know, lots of windows and stuff like that. So there's a lot that you can do with these, these foam core sets, but today... In this video, we're going to concentrate on what do we have to do to make this one. Because once you can make this one, you can make any of these. Now, you can make these with nothing more than an X-Acto, a decent uh, metal uh, ruler, some wood glue, uh, or just any kind of glue. It doesn't have to be wood glue. That's why I'm using wood glue because that's what I got on hand and a piece of this foam core. So if you look at the side of this foam core, you can basically see that it is two layers of cardboard with a layer of foam in between. You can pick this up at a Michaels, a Hobby Lobby, places like that. This one cost a big whopping $2.99 for this sheet. I don't know how big it is. It's about 18 by 24, something like that. So, let's get started building one of these. Uh, now, I do have a few extra little tools that I like to use for this sort of thing. So, I have a nice straight edge here. Big, long straight edge with, a, with a, uh, a lip on it that's really nice to use. And this is the tool that I will actually use for a lot of my cutting. And then these little bits here, if you're working with foam core or you're in the foam core area in the Hobby Lobby or Michaels, you'll see things like this, and I'll show you how we're going to use these as well. All right, let's get started. All right, so since this is the building that we're going to be uh, making, uh, let's get some measurements off of it, see what we're looking at as far as uh, the front and the back wall. We're looking at about four and a half inches. The side wall, we're looking at about two and a half. So uh, uh, that's about 14 inches. And then the height is about two and three quarters. So let's see, let's write that down. So we're going to cut out a piece to start with that is uh, two and three quarters high and 14 inches long. I think this corner looks a little bit nicer, so I'm going to start on this corner over here. Let me see if I can get uh, 14 inches measured out here. Let's put that line in. That's where it's going to go down. And then we'll call that the main piece that we're going to cut out. Now, the reason I like to use this fancy tool is because it keeps my cuts uh, nice and straight perpendicular not just a straight cut in general but a straight cut up and down and that's probably one of the uh, disadvantages to simply using a, a knife and uh, a ruler is that no matter how much you try or no matter how how much I try I guess I should say um, I can't keep my my cuts uh, straight up and down and so sometimes then when you're putting the pieces together they don't really fit together all that well if you if your cuts aren't straight so that got me my little rectangle there and now I'm going to start chopping this down so I know I want uh, a two and a half inch piece for the side and I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this so uh, two and a half, uh, four and a half, uh, two and a half, and then the rest of it is four and a half there. We're going to have this done 
hopefully within this video as far as the putting it together as far as putting it together and I may not have um, we probably will do the texturing and things like that in a separate video so again all we're doing is cutting those pieces nothing fancy there so now I have my uh, my walls right so and this is fairly durable stuff you know those buildings that I showed you those were all made well over 10 years ago we game on them a lot and they have held up really really well so if you put together foam core buildings that you know you could be proud of then they're, they're gonna last quite a while if you just kind of throw them together maybe they're not gonna last so long so I'm gonna show you a few things a few tips that might help you as far as whether or not they're gonna last so the next thing I'm going to do is make a little channel on the end pieces. And the reason I do this is really for durability. So I know that this piece is going to go on the end here. I'm going to make a little pencil mark here because I'm going to cut some of that wall out. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. Let me see if I can get this closer. So you see it has, I don't know, is that, can you see that okay? See those two lines? So I'm going to, I'm going to snip out a little bit of that and I'll show you. Now remember, uh, you know, depending on, the size of the building that you want and honestly it just really doesn't matter that much I could easily just glue these together uh, and be done with it but I am gonna do a little a little something to make it a little bit more sturdy I'll show you what I'm gonna do here so here I'm not gonna use my fancy tool I'm just gonna use the razor the exacto I'm not gonna cut all the way through I'm gonna cut some of this and then I'm going to cut on the foam core side and I'm going to cut where I leave the cardboard and then when I peel that off I have a nice channel there that that's going to fit into and that's going to create my corner and now when I glue it together it'll have glue on two different sides rather than just having glue on one side so that's gonna work really nice it's been a while since I've done one of these and you know what I probably made that a little bit bigger than I should have so I'm gonna I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try to do it better on this one something like that and you can see how that's gonna fit together that fits a lot better all right now if I had just thrown those pieces together it would have uh, I could have already had glue on it and moving on but uh, I want to show you some of these tricks to making the pieces a little more durable so that they will last uh, be sure to not cut yourself when you're doing this be sure and wear your chainmail gloves your uh, you know all that sort of thing your your bubble wrap suit Okay, so now I'm going to put these walls together. Yep. Now I'm going to have to use um, my spouts all plugged up. That happens with age. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. So I got an old brush up here I'm going to use instead of squeezing it. Because I want to, I want to use my little, uh, my little bonus pieces. You don't have to use these. You really don't. I'm not too worried about how neat it looks right now, and I know that I want some glue on this inside part here too. So we're gonna put some glue on the inside, and then we're gonna slam it together, like so. And the thing that we can do next is to uh, put one of these on it. It shows you that you have a nice right angle. You can see that I pushed it really tight 
got some glue squirting out there got some glue squirting out here now let's get the other wall on let's go ahead and do another end sometimes I forget to switch the cameras you guys remind me if I need to switch to a different view and then we'll put it like so and then we're gonna put a couple clamps on it we'll push it together good 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 push it so it's tight nice and tight there I want the glue squeezing out that tells me I got it together good this is really shaping up. You know what I should have done? Doggone it. I forgot to, build, I forgot to cut in the doors and, and the windows. Normally, I would want to cut the doors and the windows in first. Maybe I should stop at this point and at least do the front wall. I can go back and cut a, a window or two in, in these without too much problem. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do... Uh, windows and doors at at least one of these got a little carried away there didn't i uh, uh, okay oh look we got a little little uh what a little uh step or something out here in the front that's kind of cute um, we have one door and we have a window on this wall over here i left it blank a lot of times i will butt buildings up against each other so i like to leave a blank side because you know that, that means that's the side that I'll butt up against something else I got a window in the back that won't be hard to, to cut in another window on the side so let's say this next wall is the front so we want to cut in a window and a door better check the measurements on this let's see so the wall the door is I made it looks like seven eighths and for my metric friends, uh, sorry, you'll just have to figure that out. Uh, this doesn't have a metric on it. And for the height, it looks like one and three eighths. Okay. For this little window, let's see. Uh, I put it about one inch from the side. And then I put this window about one inch from the side. And then the window is basically a half inch square. Okay. All right. So let's get those cut in. So I came over one inch. And then it's going to be a half inch window. It looks like from the top, it's down about, down about a half inch also. So now I have to go in and uh, I'll just use the ruler and the X-Acto and I'll cut those in. Now, any uh, imperfections, you're going to kind of cover over with the uh, you know the adobe look with the plaster and we'll I'll show you how we're going to do that as well so got that line in I'm not going to do interiors on this and that's up to you again you know if that's how you choose to live your life you want to have an interior you know so be it but for our initial buildings that Mila and I built uh, years and years ago we didn't do we didn't do interiors, so uh, I'm not going to be doing an interior on this one either. Okay, so I wonder if I could use reuse that piece as my little patio piece. Just using this little piece that I had for the door, and uh, we'll reuse that as our patio. Not patio, I keep saying patio, it's not really a patio. It's just a step. Look at that. Man, is that looking like home? That's so welcoming. Come on in, y'all. Um, we're going to... A little something, something here. We could round it off, or we could just leave it square. We could round it off a little bit. Yeah, let's round it off. I'm not even going to use a... I'm just going to cut it. I don't really... I think I can go ahead and glue that in. Maybe I should wait. 
Maybe I should wait and see how this is setting up. So that'll be the last wall that we're going to put in. Of course, we got to do our roof. Oh, caught my corner there. That's looking pretty cool, man. That is looking pretty cool. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and glue in uh, this last wall. I don't want to glue that in. I want to cut that window in before I do that. The back window is set, oh, let's see, about an inch and a half from the side. Inch and a half from that side. It's going to be half inch down. Yeah, I think I'm going to just have to skip the uh, window for the, for the side. I'm going to skip that because it's going to be too much of a bitch to try and cut that in. Boys and girls, make sure you uh, make sure you cut your windows in before uh, windows and doors in before you start gluing it together. Ah! <laughs> I tell you what, you know the fun part of, of watching Dave do something is you know there's going to be mistakes. Um, I don't mind sharing that with you, uh, and uh, you all. Um, can can uh, learn from my error. It's been uh, you know I don't know. It may have been ten years since I've done any Adobe buildings. There is our window cut into the back. Has a little extra character. So now that we got that window in, we're gonna leave the sides blank. We're gonna go ahead and glue this uh, wall in here. Hey Dustin. What you doing? I'm putting a building together. What are you doing? It's time to eat. Oh good. I'm ready for something to eat. Come oh. around onto this side so you can see the camera. Hey everybody, look, it's Dustin. Hi. Dustin's excited about playing some pulp alley with me. Yeah. I am. Are we gonna play? Are you gonna are you gonna play. All right. All right. So. Oh, really? Hmm. Hmm. All right. It's time to eat. Thank you for coming over and letting me know. Yep. All right, I'll be over there. Okay, I put my clamps on. I'm going to have to take these off to get the new ones on. Okay. Now we can get the new ones on. And I'll... And then I'll... Uh, head next door. And I'll have to come back and finish this up with you all here in a little bit. You know what, I'm going to need to, I wanted to get that that step on the front as well, but I'm not going to be able to do it yet. I'm not going to be able to put that step on just yet because I need to secure, I need to secure this wall and make sure it glues nice and straight and everything runs true. So I'm going to put that in like that. Right now, there'll be an edit. I'll go eat and I will come back slightly fatter than I am now. Just a minute. All right, everybody. I'm back. A little bit fatter, well-fed, plumped up. Let's see what we got here. Let's get this off of here. What do you think? Oh, got another one on there. So, these little pieces are awfully handy. If you don't have something like this, you know, it's a lot harder to make sure everything is, you know, you got all those right angles and everything going. And these, man, um, I would definitely recommend these. And they even have some of these that do like a T. Now, the reason uh, are, is twofold why I do my corners the way I do. And, and you know, it definitely adds to the length of time uh, to get it all done. But... Uh, it gives you a nice and neat corner. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have exposed foam 
uh, on one of your sides. Plus, doing it this way, you're not just gluing one side uh, to one side. You're actually gluing two sides to two sides. So it makes a much stronger corner to do the, the, your corners this way. Now, doesn't mean that that's how you got to do it. You can just as easily, uh, you know, just butt them up against each other and call it good. I think I want to do the roof next. Should we do the roof? So lots of different ways that you could do this. One is I could just cut out, you know, the overall dimensions and cut it on top. I could also cut out the interior dimensions and just, you know, put it on top. I think what I am going to do, and although on this one you'll see that it is just a flat roof up there, I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut out that interior dimension, and I'm going to sink it down in just a little bit. I think that would be kind of cool. So let's just get our interior dimensions, and we're looking at four and an eighth by two and a little bit less than an eighth. All right, so now that we have that cut out, that fits over there. Okay, okay, okay. I think what I want to do is push it down just a smidge just a smidge. I think what I want to do is put some supports in there to hold that roof up. Yeah, let's do that. So, put some glue on the inside. Where are we? Not always conscious remember that I'm doing a video and I'm more interested in just putting my little building together so I threw some glue on the inside of the wall and then I'm gonna throw my uh, roof on top so if you don't have a nice clean blade uh, you're gonna get the foam is gonna get pulled on the inside and I don't know how well you can see that but you see it's kind of a booger there where it kind of pulled the foam. Um, you want to use a nice clean uh, blade when you're doing this. It works a heck of a lot better than trying to just use whatever old blade you had stuffed in there. And there is the roof. Okay. I think that does it. You have... Um, Adobe buildings all over the place. You have uh, Adobe buildings are some of the oldest buildings that mankind built. Uh, you got uh, Adobe buildings that go back at least, uh, you know, 2000 BC. And you find them, uh, you know, all over the world, Adobe buildings. Uh, one of the big reasons why let me get a paper towel real quick. Um, one of the big reasons why we did Adobe buildings is just you find them all over the place. Um, they work best in uh, dry environments. So you'll find them in Western Asia. Uh, you don't find them a lot in Eastern Asia because it's, uh, you know, it's a lot wetter. Uh, but West Asia... Uh, Africa, you find adobe buildings in Africa, um, Middle East. You also find adobe buildings in um, Eastern Europe, uh, predominantly around areas like uh, the Ukraine. Uh, Cossacks uh, used adobe buildings quite a bit. Uh, Romania also has a lot of adobe buildings. You go down into North Africa, in um, Western Africa, in South Africa. Those are all very dry climates, and they have a lot of adobe buildings. Then, of course, you go to um, South America, a lot of adobe buildings. Central America, up into the southwest of, of North America, like... Uh, 
Oh, Arizona, New Mexico, and then all the way up into Colorado as well. At least southern Colorado, uh, you get a lot of adobe buildings in that area as well. Anyway, here is our first adobe building. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, we don't have those supports on there. If you've got this far, I guess the next video we'll do the doors, uh, we'll do the windows, and we may talk a little bit about putting the, uh, the stucco on there too, or the, the texture on there. Uh, the corners of the building uh, is really like an indicator almost of how old the style is. If it's a particularly old building, then the corners could be fairly rounded. And that's done for uh, a number of reasons. One is that when people go back and repair the adobe, oftentimes it's basically like adding another layer, so it just continues to round out the corners a little bit. But also, traditionally, the older buildings definitely had rounder corners on them. But that's not always a good indicator because some of the more modern adobe buildings are given rounded corners to uh, give the impression of an older building. So you, you run into that as well. All right, boys and girls, I hope you uh, had fun with this one. If this is something that you want to see more of, oh, we got to put our, our uh, roof supports in here too. We'll do a few logs. I don't do a lot of logs. I'll normally just do, what did I do on this one? Three. Uh, I put three uh, beams uh, that are coming out the front here. I don't normally do anything in the back. It's really, for me, it's, it's definitely more just for, for looks, just to give it a little bit of, of zhuzh. All right. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more of these. How, did you make one of these with me, or are you going to? Um, I'd, I'd like to know uh, if you got any good out of this video. Is this something that you want to see more of? Do you want to see uh, this building finished, or is that all you needed? So let me know in the comments below. Make sure you're a subscriber to our little channel. Make sure you hit the like button. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Yeah.